Hello, in this video I will be explaining to you an interesting GitLab server-side request forgery vulnerability that was reported on HackerOne and was rewarded 5k dollars. First, let's remind what the SSRF vulnerability is and what its impact. It occurs when an attacker can force the server to perform a request to a specified by him location. But the SAUL functionality does not mean it's vulnerable. It becomes vulnerable when the attacker can also request the addresses from internal network or the local ones. But GitLab has a bug bounty program on HackerOne since 2014 and they have already resolved over 500 reports. So you may be thinking, how has it happened that it's still vulnerable to this attack in 2019? So GitLab had a protection that was supposed to prevent this type of attacks. There is a class URL blocker that has protections against local host and local network addresses. So right now we are inside the function called validate. And the interesting part is here where it makes the DNS query and returns the IP address resolved from the domain provided by user. And later, all these validations happen on the address returned by the DNS server. And when these validations pass, then GitLab decides that this URL is safe and an HTTP request can be made. And for this purpose, an HTTP party gem is used. But before making an actual HTTP request, it makes a second DNS query. So here we have to notice that the domain can be completely controlled by the attacker. And he can set up the DNS server that it responds with a different IP address in response to each query. This type of attack is called time of check, time of use and its use is not limited to SSRFs. It occurs when the attacker is able to cause the validating function and the executing function to process different inputs. And in this example, it is achieved by the DNS server returning a valid IP address on the first query and then the local IP on the second. Impact of this vulnerability is high because it allowed the attacker to request a Google Cloud metadata endpoint, for example, and take over the whole server. An interesting part here is that this report was first marked as duplicate, but later the GitLab team have decided to award the reporter with a 5000 bounty because it helped them to realize that the attacker could obtain a GCP token without a header. So let's see how they have fixed this vulnerability. So the validate function no longer returns true or false, but now it returns a URI and a hostname. And a hostname is only used to validate the SSL certificate, but the actual HTTP request is made to the IP address returned by the first DNS query. It allows to avoid doing the second DNS query. I hope you now understand the vulnerability better. If you have, leave a like and a subscription. And for now, thank you.